Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Are you sure? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Have a blessed Sunday to you all. So when you go there, you will feel the presence that you are inside there. Why? Because there's some music. The, the, the animals, you know, the, the water, Noah's talking, you know. So it was a good experience. So if I were you guys, if there's some kind of opportunity like this, let's go for it, please. So we want you guys to come and join. So maybe next, maybe next year we're going to have um, different location. So yeah, praise God. Glory to God. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful time for us to do this. Thank you, Lord. Look, our verse of the day is on James 5, 14. Can we all read it? One, two, three, go. Is anyone among sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let's stand up and pray. Yes, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, oh Lord, we praise you. We glorify your name. You deserve to be glorious. You deserve the honor. Heavenly Father, I pray, oh God, and I thank you so much for this day. This beautiful day that you've given us, this wonderful, this opportunity that you've given us that we are right now in the church, that we choose you, that we want to be with you. We want to be um, like you. We want to be holy like you. We want to be righteous like you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I pray, oh God, for this service that we, we're going to do it, oh God. Let your will be done right now let your way hallelujah jesus i pray oh god for mickey that's who's gonna do the worship i pray for pastor romy i pray for all uh for Atites, for all the people you're gonna use for today filled us oh god with your holy spirit even though the congregation father god that we can feel you father god that we can feel your presence right now let your holy spirit flow in this place in the name of jesus let your holy ghost father god let it be oh god in the name of jesus Jesus. Father God, thank you so much, oh God, for this, oh God, for this opportunity, oh God, that we can hear your voice, we can hear, we can hear your voice, we can feel your presence right now. That Father God, that you're gonna use Pastor Romeo, oh God, to teach the word of God. Father God, we pray, oh God, that not just we're not just gonna sit down and listen, but after this, we're gonna do it in action. We're gonna do it, Father God. We're gonna share it. Father God, let us be bold with your word, with your goodness. Father God, let us be, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, thank you so much, oh God, for this day. And Father, I pray that you will, you will do it for us. And we take, we, we want to take over everything for you. Right now, the, 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 the things that it's not for you, the things that it's not pleasing you. Father God, I pray that you take that out in the name of Jesus. Father God, all the destruction, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. So that way we can feel, we can accept, we can get everything right now that you want us to do. Father God, we thank you so much. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the love. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your peace, the joy that you give in us every day, Father God. Thank you so much, oh God. Thank you for each and every one that who is in here right now and via Zoom, via Facebook, Father God. Thank you. And all of this, we give everything to you. We give glory to you and honor. And acknowledge you right now in your presence. We give you all the praises and all the glory. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, we welcome you to this place. We ask that your presence would come and fill us up, Lord. Lord, if there's a part of us that's empty, that's dry, pray that right now, with one touch of your hand, that you fill us up, God. We're here to offer our lives to you, offer our praise to you. Lord, let this be living water flowing in this room right now, God. Living praises, God. We thank you so much for your Holy Spirit and all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. And God is good. And all the time. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Sing this with me. I just want to sing. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart in every mouth. I know that he speaks within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every dark addiction. Every dark addiction starts to break. Amen. Declare there is hope. Declaring there is hope in the next yeah. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is power. Break every strong Shine through the shadows. Run back around. Hallelujah. Just speak the name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Oh, your Every soul can be the depression. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is power. Break every struggle. Shine through the shadow. Sing that again. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is love. Your name is strong. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Shout Jesus from the mountain. In Jesus in the streets. In Jesus in the darkness or for every enemy. And Jesus for my faith, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Ang Panginoong Diyos, kung po sa ilaan, pupurihin kita magpakailanman at iyahayap ko ang iyong kadakilaan. Let's worship the Lord in spirit and truth. We're working to be praised to the Lord. Thank you. 
Jesus to Mickey, and I said, oh, wow, this is a good song, right? So uh, the song said, your name is power, your name, no, your name is healing, your name is life, break every stronghold. And do you know what is the stronghold? 
the one that control you, the money, the depression, the anxiety. And we let God to control us. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Because in Jesus, Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And there's another song that, uh, that I like. No matter the bumps, no matter the bruises, no matter the scars, still the truth is the cross has made, the cross has made us flawless. Do you know what is flawless? Imperfection. No mistakes with God. When God died on the cross, he forgave our sins. And he make us his children. Let us pray. God, I amaze that you delight in me. Thank you seeing me not for my imperfections, but your child who delights in you. Help me to never lose focus in you, your guidance and your love. I want you to be the most important part of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us partake. took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. Amen. Partake. Amen. Praise the Lord. How I many of you are blessed? Amen. I mean, I don't need to preach, right? God has spoken already. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, Thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord. I just thank you for what a wonderful blessing, Lord, to have a family uh, together in communion and in unity, in love, with joy, with peace and hope. Together, we experience you, Lord. And thank you for pouring out your glory upon this place and experience it tangibly, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for those wonderful, wonderful people that are willing to serve and minister to others, oh Lord God. Thank you, and we ask one, uh, once again, Lord, for your spirit, Lord, to come and speak to us. Lead us in all truth as what you have promised, Lord, Holy Spirit. Come and, and lead us, O oh Lord, and speak uh, a fresh revelation from what you wanted us to see and from what you wanted us to hear today. I pray, Lord, to cover me under your wings, that people may hear you, that people may see you, not me, Lord, and bless this time together. With, with my brothers and sisters that are here, and of course with uh, via Zoom and live on Facebook and YouTube. I pray all of this with your most precious blood, O Lord Jesus, and all the glory and honor belongs to you alone, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 So we have this series that we wanted to continue today, and hopefully you bear with me. It's a little bit long. I'm <laughs> just kidding. It's going to be awesome. And it's going to be fantastic. So to start with, I'm just going to have a review here uh, from the epistle of Paul to Timothy, the letter of Paul's in the second Timothy, last yes, Sunday, that we talk about. So Paul's last word is actually say to Timothy, this is probably the, the, the last one that he wrote from the entire epistles, but I don't know. Uh, but that is only the record that we see uh, at this point of time. But this is the last letter that we have. And, and, the, and the word says is that uh, in our review from last Sunday, Paul looked past his own circumstances to express concern for the, uh, uh, it's not there yet, but it's okay. Uh, just listen to me. Paul says, look past his own circumstances to express concern Yeah, to express concern to for the churches and specifically for Timothy. Paul wanted to use his last word to encourage Timothy and the other believers to persevere in faith. How many of you have that thought in your mind and say, yes, I'm going to be keep going and to do what God calls me to do, to keep the faith, to keep fight the good fight of faith, you know? And it is easy uh, to s get set a sidetrack in the Christian life. You n everybody knows that. We have to keep our eyes on the prize being rewarded in heaven by Jesus Christ. 
That's why Paul says in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me to the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, which give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also who will have loved his appearing. Do you love Jesus? Do you love God? Then this promise is, belongs to you. The crown of righteousness and the crown of glory. We must strive to avoid both false doctrine and ungodly practices. This can only be accomplished by being grounded in our knowledge of God, word, and firm in our refusal to accept anything that is unbiblical. Let's stand firm from whom we believe, not what we believe, but from whom we believe, Jesus Christ. He is Lord. Be strong and endure, for he will never be abandoned you. This is the power of grace, just to tell you that. You know, and I, to me, like, you know, we're not just standing for what we just believe, but we, we have to stand more firmly in who we believe so that when we face the world, we're not going to get lost. You know what I mean? When you know Jesus, that is the, the key for us to stand firm. So let's proceed to our, um, our um, second, uh, another letter of uh, another epistle that we have, and that is the book of James. And here's my introduction about James. Uh, you know, James is not actual, the name of James is not his name. His name is, in Hebrew word, is Iacobo. And then in Greek word, uh, I mean, in Greek word, is Iacobos, and then in Hebrew word, is Jacob. And Jacob means, you know, it's just similar to Jacob. So his name is Jacob, not really James. Do you, do you hear me? So d don't get confused why there's a book of James, but it's actually the letter of Jacob, which is Jacob. And Jacob is actually the, th it's the um, brother of Jesus that used to be not a believer as well. He doesn't believe in Jesus even if he's a brother. That was before until God and God changed his heart and see who Jesus is. So Never, I, I think it's not just only believing that it's just like saying, you know, I'm not really sure he's my brother, <laughs> if he's real, if he's the Messiah or not, right? That's probably common to, to people to today, like uh, many of us probably we don't believe in our own siblings, right? Uh, many of you have that uh, little bit of uh, something, <laughs> You know, but we should lift each other up as a brother, as a sister. I like when you sit together, your brothers and sisters, and you sit together. I never seen that much to people like when their brothers and sisters, they don't sit together. They, they're really, they, you know, I don't know why, but, you know, I, I'm just observing things <laughs> like that. But pardon me, I don't judge, but it's just the way I observe, you know. But anyway, so what happened here, you know, it's uh, uh, the leader of Messianic, but th James become the leader of a Messianic mother church in Jerusalem. Wow. So he became the true believer of Jesus. He was known as a pillar of the Jerusalem church. He was also known as a peacemaker who led with wisdom and courage until he was tragically murdered. He was killed because of his faith in Jesus. Because of my brother's uh, thing, <laughs> I will be killed. You know, how many of you gave your life to your brother? But this one, he just uh, didn't give his life for his, to his brother, but he gave his life to his Savior. You know what I mean? And his Lord. So he was known as a pillar of the Jerusalem church. He was also known as a peacemaker who led with wisdom and courage until he was he was tragically murdered, right? And the letter of this, the, the letter greet all the Messianic Jews who were living outside the land of Israel. Now, it, it, this letter is particular to those people that are Jewish, but they are Christian. They become a Christian. And so this letter is for everywhere, wherever the Jewish are, uh, where are the Jewish Messianic or Jewish Christians are. And so today, we're not probably Jewish, but you are a Christian. And this letter is for you too. This letter is for me. 
And there are two main influences of Jacob's wisdom or James' wisdom. One is the teaching of Jesus, which is the Sermon of the Mount. You know that, or, you know that Sermon of the Mount, Matthew chapter 5? That's what the letter came coming up from. That's where the heart of, that is what the heart of James, why he wrote this letter to everyone. It's the Matthew 5. You know, the Sermon of the Mount is a bless. I will tell you more about that. Biblical wisdom, book of Proverbs, uh, of course, chapter 1 to 9, you will see the wisdom in, in a biblical way, what this wisdom is all about. And you know, uh, it emphasizes in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. That is amazing. That is, to me, that's it. That is wisdom for me. And Jacob literally grew up with Jesus and with the book of Proverbs. The body of the book is in chapter 2, 5, which is true wisdom. Jesus' summary of Torah to love God and to love others, but he is also the one time one believer of Jesus. But actually, I'm just pointing out the Torah, which is the book of Jewish people. That, uh, that the center of the book of Jewish people is to love God. This is the center of the commandment, to love God above all and to love others as you love yourself. The same thing what Jesus emphasized in New Testament is to love God above all and to love others as you love yourself. There's no other commandment or greatest commandment is just to love. I like what Mickey said a while ago. Lord, let us feel your love today. Let's bring that love more and more in our lives. Right? In, in, the, in that worship, at that very moment, you got to sink in and soak into the presence of God. To the, soak into the love that flowing in our midst. And I love that. I love that moment. And I felt that today. You know, I felt the presence of God. Now, let's look on these things that I'm talking about, what we see in the, this book, what this is all about. To me, the book from the chapter 1, you know, that I see the grace of God makes you perfect. How many of you are saying that you're perfect? Uh -huh. This is a big issue to the entire world today. Nobody's perfect. But here he says, the grace of God makes you perfect. We'll find out later. And then here you go. In the third, the starting chapter 2 to chapter 5, it says, faith in action is grace. Wow. Do you know that? Have you heard this before? Faith in action is actually a grace. So that is one thing that another issue here that I'm going to talk about. Okay, let's start, let's begin with this. What is this faith in action is, in, is grace? And let's see what, what, uh, what James really wanted to talk about. You know, many of you probably confused about these things about, you know, like, is James uh, doing some, another doctrine, you know? Uh, like somewhat like, you know, Paul emphasized that, what Paul is emphasized, we can only say by grace. And then here, we always hear from the book of James, faith without work is dead. But let's find out, are they similar or what they're talking about? Are they against it? Are they the same doctrine? Are they the same theology? Are they the same belief with Jesus? When they said that uh, many people, they have this issue, right? Today, Christians, they, they fight against this doctrine, you know? Who is right and who is wrong? <laughs> Let's find out. I don't, I don't think there is right and wrong, but I think there is grace. That's my point here. I want, you to, I want to point out this. And first of all, let's look on the first thing that what is this faith in action is all about. And faith in action is grace to find out. Number one is this. Favoritism versus love. Faith in action. Who are the people that when, you, th th this is the thing that is common to many people. You love those people that loves you, isn't it? But those people who don't love you, you don't love them. That's one point that one, James wants to emphasize that faith in action. Now look, he echoed what Jesus said. It's definitely, if you look at this verse in chapter 2, he echo what Jesus says in Matthew 5, 46, verse 48. What he says this, right? 
James exposed how we tend to know to show favor to people who can benefit us and we neglect people who can't. And usually, they are the one that need it. This is an opposite of love as Jesus defined it in Matthew 6, verse 46 and 48. Right? How many of you, those people that you don't, they're strangers to you and you don't know them. And, you, and, and probably the parents don't talk to strangers, to the kids. Is that right or wrong? <laughs> but I think that's kind of wisdom. But of course, the, you are children, you don't talk to a stranger. That is okay. But to you, as a, an adult, you can talk to a stranger, right? To show the love of Jesus. Depends what your motivation and intention. You know what I mean? Like when people ask you something about favor or ask you, where is this location? How many people just, I, I don't know. But they really know they're from there. I see people, they have a car, like when I was in Arkansas. I see people, they, his, his car is, pla his plate number, or his license plate is Arkansas. And he drove it. And then he said, and then I asked the question because his plate is Arkansas. So I felt he knew the place. And there's where in the gas station. And I said, like, sir, can you help me to find this? I, I need to go to Ozark. Oh, I don't know that place. I'm sorry. He, does, he just don't want to talk to a stranger like me. Right? There are something like that. Maybe some people approach you with something. You know, I don't know what their motivation, but you still, you have to. I, I, Filipino have this thing. I love what Filipino does. You're very hospitable people. <laughs> you, t you do whatever it takes. You approach everyone else, right? Uh, even you asking, them, even if, you don't, if they don't ask you, you will be the one to really. Uh, even there, uh, somehow like in the Filipino culture, they're not even part of that conversation and somebody jump right away. Well, if he, he knows the answer. Uh, have you observed that? That's Filipino culture. I, I, I'm not, and then you said, I'm not even talk to you. Why you answer me? You know, that's kind of Filipino culture. But you know, I mean, of course, that, that is what they, yeah. but that's my point. Right here what he says, Jesus said this. For, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collector do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what you do more than others? Do not even the tax collection do so? Therefore, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, come to that point of being perfect. Now, how can I be perfect? And of course, to me, I don't want to be pre pretend to be perfect because I know I'm not perfect. But how can you be perfect? Number one is to love. Love makes you perfect. Amen. Right? I I'm going to go further more. Just listen. Next one is this. Genuine faith. How many of you have the genuine faith in the Lord? Right? He emphasized those words in chapter 2, verse 14 to 26. What it does look like and does not look like. What is genuine faith looks like and what is genuine faith does not look like. So if someone says that they have faith in God but neglect people who are needy and poor, this person's faith is dead. Their actions betray what they say they believe. And genuine faith results in obedience to Jesus' teaching. And what is Jesus', Jesus teaching? It says this actually in... Matthew 7, 21, 27. I'm quoting again what Jesus said. What is the genuine faith? The genuine faith is that not everyone will say to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name that day. And done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, depart from me, I never knew you. Who you practice lawlessness. Now, therefore, whoever hears this saying of mine, that's what Jesus says, and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and the beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears this saying of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man 
who built his house on the sun. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and, and beat on the house, and it felt, and great was its fall. The genuine faith has the right foundation. So when the storm comes, when the things come, you won't be bothered. You won't be destroyed because you have that strong foundation. You will stand firm because of your faith in Jesus. And that's the genuine faith, no matter what. So how many people, when you start, when you start feeling, let's say you have, you've been sick and you probably, somebody or your doctor told you, like I'm just giving an example, when a doctor told you, hey, you have a cancer, how are you going to feel like? Are you going to be like stumble? Are you going to be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to be dead soon. Right? But when you have that right foundation in Jesus, you will stand firm. That's the genuine faith. When you, uh, as I said, in back in 2021, when I had the cancers back again, I just feel like, Thank you, Lord, for having me once again to have cancer. I'm crazy, like, to, to think about. Why are you thanking God for having cancer? I said, because I just need to elevate my faith in him to grow more. That is the strong, firm foundation that I have in Jesus. I said that because why are you thanking God for? Uh, since you have been this, you are in trouble, don't you know that? When you had the car accident, when you have speeding ticket, <laughs> you have the cup full over, uh, you know, you, and, and w w are you going to thank God? I don't think so, right? But if you have the right foundation, Lord, thank you. You should thank God because maybe this is the lesson for you to be taking, to be takers next time, to be sober next time, right? In driving, <laughs> that's my point. Anyway, that's a storm firm, right? So whatever your problems right now, whatever you're going through in life, what, what, what you should do is to look upon Jesus. And that is the true, uh, that is the person, a Christian, that have a genuine faith, no matter what you're going through in life. Number three, the tongue. He emphasized the tongue. How many of you? aware of these things you know you know the tongue it says so with the mouth with the same mouth we unleash pain upon people and then go offer praise to god it's so messed up you know i messed it up you know you have the same tongue that you use to glorify god and curse other people isn't it shame now what jesus said about these things you know and and Actually, James is talking about this brother here that's saying, this is what my brother said, right? And this is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, 43, verse 45. Look at carefully what it says this. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a head tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bram bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth is speaketh. Now, listen to me carefully. Where your heart is, is your heart right with the Lord? What is, your, what is coming out from your mouth? If you curse, then your heart is full of curse. If you glorify God, then your heart is full of love and full of glory of God. So whatever that comes out to your mouth, gossip, and it, the gossip comes to your mouth, then you are, your heart is full of gossip. Your heart is not right with the Lord. When your mouth is full of curse to others, then your, your heart is not right with God. When your heart is angry, you will get mad to others. When your heart is painful, you will put pain in other people. To tell you the truth. 
But if your heart is full of love, full of joy, full of peace, that's where you're going to speak to others as well. That's what's going to come out to your mouth. Amen? So that's my point right there. For, one of, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Number four, it says, condemning others. How many people condemn others? Judging others. We judge people and then go talk hard, badly about them behind their back. <laughs> Is this common? Yes. Even on Christian community, it does. So that's why this is just what, it's not for us to make feel guilty, but this is for us to learn, for us to grow in our faith in the Lord. So Matthew 12, 36, verse 37, it, Jesus says this, but let your yes, uh, I mean, but I say to you that for every evil word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment, for by your word you will be justified, and by your word you will be condemned. Amen? So I don't judge. <laughs> start judging. Uh, start uh, betraying others, even when they're, especially when they're not around. You don't have to talk about them. You know, we just talk about in First Thessalonians in chapter 4 that he says, there, Paul, mind your own business. That's what Paul said. Tell, you know, do your own thing. Focus on what God tells you to do. And then it's not that you don't care for other people, but it's mind your own business. Who, you know, it's not what you don't care, but, you know, who cares what other people does, right, in their life? All we got to do is we have concern because we're family right now. I don't know where you are at with God, but that's not my business. I'm just saying, I'm encouraging you on how to bring this up, how to live in the life of wisdom, right? And then number five, it says, telling the truth. Are you lying? Have you ever lied? Right? Not many people, they said that I'm not a liar. I'm a liar. Thank God changed us from glory to glory. Thank God convicts me when I lie. Right away, I ask for forgiveness of the Lord. Lord, sorry, I lie. But this is the thing that about telling the truth. In fi verse 5, verse 12, chapter 5, verse 12, he said, We also tend to distort the truth to our own advantage. Let your yes be yes. Uh, we talk about people up a window into our hearts and our core values. So Jesus said, but let your yes be yes and your no, no. For whatever is none, then there is from the evil one. Because our words tell the truth about our character. Amen? Amen. Number six. The wisdom with verse, the true wisdom versus false wisdom. False wisdom. So what is the true wisdom and what is false wisdom? So, you know, here we can talk about in the chapter, James chapter 3, verse 13 to 16. But I wanted to emphasize what the, the true wisdom is right here for James that emphasize the, what the sermons of the mount, of what Jesus said. And Jesus said is this, listen carefully to what Jesus said. This is the true wisdom for all of us so that we can learn how to live with others. So that we can learn how to live in godly and walk in his spirit. To live in the light. Because this is what Jesus encouraged to ev every Christian, every believer, every follower of Jesus. This is what Jesus is crying out for you to do. This is wisdom. Blessed are the poor in the spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are peacemakers, for they shall be called son of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. 
Now, look at that. Starting with that part, la the last part, it says that somebody accuse you or uh, makes persecute you about Jesus because of his name, then you are blessed. Right? It doesn't matter what they tell you. It doesn't matter what, what they think about you. You're crazy. You're insane. Why you go to church? Why you go to Bible study? Why do you all do this for the Lord? Right? Is that God real? Is that God that you live with really taking care of you? Look at you, right? You're crazy. Something like that. It doesn't matter what he says. Uh, that, as long as what Jesus said, you are blessed when, things, when that thing happened to you. And I like it when he says this. Blessed bless are those who are merciful because they shall obtain mercy. So, wow. That's, a, that, that's, a, that's something. And then blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness. I wanted to, to take a moment with that. Are we hungry for righteousness and holiness of God? If you do, then you are blessed. That's what Jesus said. But if you're not, I don't know. You won't be filled. He said people that's asking for, I want miracle. I want the glory of God to see in my life. But what happens next? How come not they don't see it? Because they're not hungry for righteousness and holiness. The only reason for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the only reason for you to be filled, the only thing that makes you feel the Lord is there with you is for you to be holy and righteous. You need to be in the presence of God. What is the presence of God? Means the presence of God is the holiness and righteousness. I see that here when we do the communion, I feel that, I felt that holiness and righteousness. When we do worship, I felt the holiness and righteousness. I felt the presence of God. And I felt that holiness. I felt that righteousness. Jesus said, where I am at, you should be where I am at. <laughs> to all those people who follow me, you should be there where I am at. Uh, if you're a follower of Jesus, that's what you wanted to pursue. That's what you wanted to hungry for. Hungry for his presence. And his presence is holiness and righteousness. Now to tell you, if you're just still attached with this word that's full of darkness, then you are not righteous. You're not in the presence of God. I'm sorry to say that, but that is what the word says. I did not say that, but Jesus said it. Now for you as a Christian, that is my encouragement. It's not for you to be condemned or to make you feel guilty. Well, we're still living in the word, right? Yes. But it doesn't mean that you cannot overcome this word. When you have Jesus, you can overcome the word when you have Jesus. Number seven. This is something the, uh, that, is my, uh, in, that leads me to a, a point of a divided heart. You know, how many of you know this thing? That you cannot serve two masters. I serve the world. I serve Jesus. You can't do that. You must serve one at least. So that you don't, they don't call you hypocrite or a liar. Many people come to the church and they observe other people. Oh, I know that guy. He's in the bar last night. <laughs> oh, I know that lady. He has two boyfriends. Oh, I know that. Someone like that, you know, you, you just feel like, you know, you're totally right now, but, you know, things like that. You can't serve two masters. People might see you. People might hear you. I'm not, I'm not, here. it's not putting damnation or condemnation here. I'm just, Paul, uh, James is totally reminding the Christian, this is how you should live. This is how wisdom is. When you live, in Jesus, live like fully in Jesus. Don't look on other things. I'm not going to read. So he says this. In, uh, Jesus said this. I mean, in, in this part. Like, I like what it says here. Um, Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the word, make himself an enemy of God. That is clear. You want to be a friend of this word? Then you are an enemy of God. If you want a friend of God, then you, you're, this word is your enemy. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're full of hatred. No, it's not. It's just you don't like 
you don't like Satan. You don't like the darkness works in your life. You want the light of Jesus to shine in you. That's what it is. And he says this, it's not you who's doing it if you desire for it. And who is the one that's doing it? The Spirit. And if you look at this, it said that. The Spirit, he will give you more grace. Therefore, he said, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. You know that the spirit, one of the spirit, fruit of the spirit is humility. And you should have that. If you humble yourself to the Lord, that makes you have that undivided heart. Actually, that's the key for being perfect. Just to be humble. Knowing the fact that you are not perfect. I like when we had this Bible study last Thursday. A person next to me, like, you know, we had that Bible study discussion. And I asked them, I asked everyone, but I asked it because we kind of go around. And this is my question. Are you faithful in your faith in the Lord? And I, and, 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 and I kind of go around. So the first one, it's on my lap, is that the one that I asked. It's good that, that that's not an accident or coincidence that I asked that person. And I asked that person, are you perfect? Uh, are, you, are you faithful? That's what I said. Uh, are you faithful in God? Because God is faithful. And then he said, but with, with this, um, with this uh, grumbling voice, like a trembling voice, he said this, I need to work strive hard for that. And I said to him, that makes you perfect. Just being humble, just admitting to yourself that you are not perfect. Then you become perfect. Because now you're acknowledging the help of God. For you to be perfect. Humility is the key. Right? And I'm telling you. Humility is wisdom. It's, it, it cures worldliness. You know if you have worldliness. You have thinking of your mind as a worldly. Then this humility cures it. You know how? There you go. Therefore submit to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, your sinner, and purify your heart. Your double-minded, lament and mourn and weep. Let your louder, laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Amen. When you have, in, I, I have this moment in my life. That I know I can't do nothing anymore with my situation. And that makes me humble. You know, when, 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 I, when I told Jesus, when I heard the board, Romy, get up. When I was in that moment, that I'm, in that moment that I'm, I, was, I feel like I was dying. And then, and then there's a voice that came up. And so I said, and, and he said, get up. And I, and, and I said, if, if that is you, Lord, how can I get up? I can't even move my hands. And then God put me in a deep sleep, I believe. And then he said this, let me do it this time. See, I'm full of pride. I didn't even acknowledge God to do it for me because I depend on my own, what? Knowledge. I depend on my own strength. I depend on my own ability. But God wants you to depend on him alone. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Knowledge him in all your ways and he will lead you to straight path. And this is what Jesus said. Listen. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. You can't. So don't push yourself to the limit. I'm telling you, you're not going to be there. You're not going to make it. Everyone else in this world, whether Christian or unbelievers, they need Jesus. No matter how they try hard, even billionaires like Elon Musk, try hard to go to Mars, 
he needs Jesus to go to Mars. I don't know if you still have that project, but that's why I'm talking about. Right? Number eight. It says this. <sighs> the arrogance of wealth. I know you're aware of these things, right? Um, well, it, 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 it I'm just going to short these things up, you know, in... 4.12, verse 7, this is, Come now you will say today or tomorrow we will go such and such a city, spend, your there, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. And Jesus said, So why you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, now, if God so clothes the grass to the, of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into to the oven, will he not much more clothe you or your little faith, he said. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what sh shall we drink or what we shall wear? How many of you are concerned about your status in life today? How many of you are concerned? Well, that person has a Louis Vuitton. That person has a Louis Lamborghini. That person has this and that. I needed that too. I want that too. Can you not be grateful what you have? And why you keep buying what you're not supposed to be buying? <laughs> How many of you said that, ah, yeah, I have, I have everything, right? Yeah, you have everything. But this is one thing that most people kind of neglect. Especially Christian, this is what I'm talking about. You get whatever you want in the grocery store and a shopping mall, but you never thought about giving your tenths to the Lord. God is not asking you for your money. That's His. His 10% is belongs to God. It's not for you. It's for Him. But you don't even give it to them. Even, 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 even you don't think about to put in that box to bring the gospel, to bring... To, to shine, to glorify God in your life. But rather, you shop, 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 shop. Yeah, you get everything. Is that glorifying God? I don't think so, because those are going to be perished, just like what Jesus said. Now, I'm, coming, I'm going to that thing, the next thing that, Paul, that James emphasized, the danger of wealth. How many of you have wealth? I have. I have $1,000 in my bank account, by the way. That's my saving. That's my wealth, right? I mean, worldly wealth. That's my saying. But this is what Jesus said in this point, that he says this, Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and you will eat your you will eat your flesh like fire you have heaped up treasures in the last days jesus said this that is what james says what i just read but jesus said this he's just it's just echoing what jesus said here he said do not lay up your self treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break Break in and steal, but lay up your soul treasures in heavens where neither moth nor rust destroy and steal, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, where your heart will be also. How many of you storing up treasures in heaven? But let me tell you this. I'm not just pertaining to money or somewhat material thing about treasures here. The treasure is the things that we do for the Lord. When you care for other people's need, no matter what you have, even little, and don't be little on, don't be little on those little things. When you give it full, you know, you give it cheerfully because that's what God's heart. And that is treasures. That is your treasures in heaven. 
When you pray for others, that is treasures in heaven. When someone cursed me and pointed fingers on me like this, you, 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 you are like this. You're a son of a devil. You know what I said? I prayed for you. I love you. That's treasures in heaven. So just let you know, you don't argue with her what she knows. You don't argue with this person what, what she was hurt for and what she's against with you, but rather to pray for her. I would love to hug her. I love to hug this person, and I love to tell her that God loves her so much. Right? How many of you says somebody tells you something that's against you? Did you ever tell them, I love you? Or said, you like that too, you. Right? I don't want to say the word. <laughs> I don't really want to say that is not my that is not ba that is not abundance of my heart because I'm not angry. I always said love because uh, it, what is the bottom of your heart, the mouth speak it. That's what he said, right? So say instead of anger, say love, peace, joy. How many of you correct people in a in a loving way? Right? Uh, we had that Bible study. I asked this question. That's why I like to encourage you to go to Bible study because this question might come up. You know, one question, how are we going to rebuke people? Then it's easy. Right? You know, there are people like say, ah, well, just tell them the truth. Yeah, how? But uh, if you should tell them, but most of the truth that you tell them, they're going to be what? They're going to be hurt. Isn't it? Like today, <laughs> if they think that this, everything, this is something for me, addressing to me, you know, maybe that is something that, you know, hurts you because that is the truth. The truth hurts, that many people says. So how come you tell these people, how, how are we going to tell the people telling the truth without hurting them? That is rebuke out of love. So I made an example. If somebody is a gossiper, how are you going to correct, correct that gossiper, gossip monger? Simple. You know, with, with love, just simply telling her, hey, listen, you know, I wanted to have, I, I just wanted to share my testimony to you. I used to be a gossip monger. <laughs> and being a gossip monger, I destroyed family. I, 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 break, I broke that relationship with, between the husband and wife because of my mouth. Even if I tell the truth or tell the lie, it won't matter, but it destroys the family. It, it gives pains to them. And that's because I'm a gossip monger. But thank God, changed my heart. Thank God, thank Jesus that came into me and, and overcome that gossip. That sin come from the devil. Not from me, but come from the devil. It, it, it lies in my brain. It lies in my head. And that, when I overcome, I came to repent and ask for forgiveness to those people that I hurt. And since then, I never gossip. Did you see my point? That's how you correct people. Don't point fingers to that person. No, you are a gossip monger. You should be not doing that. Don't do that. But rather, Tell about her, tell about him what you used to be like. And then you're not actually correcting him directly, but you are actually also correcting yourself at the same time. But giving her a conviction in her heart to repent and ask for forgiveness to the Lord, that is how you rebuke people. And you know what does that mean? That is humility. When you admit, how many people tell people about your sin? Tell your people your flaws and blemishes. No one. Right? How many people cover a lot of things in their life? Uh, I see this to many girls. I'm sorry to the old ladies here. You put makeup on because you wanted to cover your blemishes and flaws in your face. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why you put lipstick? Why you p I'm not saying don't, right? But that, thing, that is one thing that you do. To cover the blemishes and flaws, you don't want to show it to people. And that's many Christians look like. 
we cover our flaws and blemishes. We don't show it. But the Bible says we have grace. And that grace is sufficient and made perfect to our weaknesses. When you, and, and, and Paul says this, if I will boast with my weaknesses, then the Christ power may work in me. Simple as this, what does that mean? If I will humble myself to the Lord, God works in me for me to overcome this pride that I have. Now I don't see myself without covering. I don't see myself with flaws. I don't see myself blemished. I don't see myself garbage. I don't see myself stinky because of Jesus, because of his grace. I am filthy as you are, used to be, and everyone else. But because of his grace, the power of his grace, that grace makes my faith into action. Number 10. The uh, number 10, the fear, patience and endurance. So therefore, I encourage you uh, having said all of that, therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. God's people are to live with patience and hope for Jesus return to set all things right. God's people says that this God's people, who are God's people? We are. Those who believe in Jesus, we are God's people. And so live patiently and hopefully to Jesus that is coming. And Jesus said this, a promise to all of you. He says that, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Matthew 24, verse 13. If you don't endure, then you won't be saved. Then, and then next is fail, fail, with faith with uh, filled with prayer so those who are Christian this is my encouragement for you I'm not gonna breathe at all but saying this to you if you are sick if something you know that you wanted to pray for come to the elders of the church come to the pastor come to the people that you know that they can pray for you I think it's it, it's not something like trying to be legalistic. It, it, no, uh, can we not pray by ourselves? No, you can do that. But I think it's, it's something that, why he said this thing? Why you need to come to the pastor? Why you need to come to the elders? You know why? So that they can anoint you. And so don't you yourself make a confession to them. Because if you just pray for yourself, you're just confessing, maybe you, you don't even realize that you sin. But when you came to the pastor, maybe uh, the pastor will ask you, is there something bothers you in your heart? Do you, do you need to make your heart right? Because what, po what James says is this, you need to confess your sin before you even come to pray so that you will be healed. And he emphasized in verse 16, he says, a prayer of a powerful, a prayer of a righteous heart, that means the prayer with the right heart is powerful and effective. So that's why you need to go to those elders. You need to go to the pastor. Make your heart right. Make sure that you are in the right track of what you're praying for. And this is one thing that uh, um, f uh, f um, James emphasized is that when Elijah prayed, right? When Elijah prayed, it happened. Because with a sincere heart, with a, that he really believes. How many of you, when you pray, you really believe that it's going to happen. Yeah. Or maybe you are hesitant. Maybe maybe not. Maybe yes. Maybe no. Right? And then this is what it says in Matthew 21, 22. Jesus, that's what Jesus said. Listen to this. So Jesus answered to these people that I'm talking about. He said, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only to do what is done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Faith in action. That's what it is. And that is grace. If you believe, then 
you will receive. The last thing to me is this, restoring others. Be brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he knows that he who turns a sinner from the errors of his way will save us all from death and cover a multitude of sins. This is my job as a pastor. This is our job as a brother in Christ and sister in Christ. Everyone's job to encourage, to bring them back into the place. You know why all of these things happen? Why all of these things wrote, written? Because the job that we need to do is this. This is wisdom from everyone else. Because this is what Jesus said. If another believer sin against you, go privately and point out the offense. If the other person you listen and confess it, you have won the person's back. You know what does that mean? Reconciliation. You know what does that mean? Restoration. You know what does that mean? Humility. You know what does that mean? Acceptance and admittance that you can't change others, only God. But you need to stand for the truth. You need to be affirmed for that thing. And, and I know it's a lot of things that I'm talking about today. Uh, I, I'm going to cover, but I'm going to really quick here. The grace of God makes you perfect, and that, I that is wisdom that we needed to make us perfect. Nobody's perfect here, right? Are you perfect? No, but this is one thing that I'm telling you. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lack nothing. Whew, say it all. I don't need to explain, right? Ta number two, the word perfect is very important to James. He repeated it seven times in his letter. In biblical Hebrew, Tanim, and Greek, Teleos, this word refers to what? Wholeness and completeness. How many of you, you feel like you're, you're lacking or you're missing something? You know, well, I'm telling you, you're not perfect. <laughs> That's why you feel that way. But if you have Jesus, you have the grace of God, then you are perfect. God gives wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. We'll give to a literally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So don't be double-minded when you ask God for something. Right? Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Number three, poverty can force us to trust God. Well, will pass away, just to tell you the truth. Yeah. Your wealth will pass away. So don't, don't bother when you are in poor, when you are poor. How many people can handle that? If you're not a Christian, you will be really, wow. You will really be like us before, you know, where, where, where I grew up in poor and poverty. And I'm really concerned, and everyone else in the family are concerned how we're going to survive. But thank God we found Jesus, and Jesus found us, you know, and have that grace and mercy, and we believe this is not going to bother us, this poverty because richness or whatever wealth that we have here is all going to pass away. But this word never pass away. So let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation. Because as a flower of the field will, will pass away. For no sooner is the sun risen with a burning heat that is sweeter the grass. Its flower falls and its beautiful appearance perishes. So the rich man also will fade away in his pursuit. Number four, God is generous and give us a new birth through Jesus Christ. Loving God under trials. How many of you, you know, when you, when you feel like in distress, when you're going through something that is so hard and difficult in life, how many of you are giving up the, your faith to the Lord? Do you still love God? No matter what's going to happen to you. That's my question. I'm not angry. I'm just emphasizing that word. Do you still love God when you experience trials? Thank God in America we don't have that much. Kind of. Unless we are going to get sick and ill, right? That's where we are becoming desperate. But no matter what you're going through in life, the question, do you still love God? No matter what you're going through. Next thing is, God, uh, so 
uh, every good gift comes from God. Remember this, the father of light. With whom there is no variation of shadow of timing of his own will. He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. So remember all of that things, you know. Whatever gift that you have, it comes from the Lord. Whatever talents, whatever you have. Right now, you have all these things. You have food. You have all that stuff. Those are good gifts. You have car. You have house. A shelter to live. A place to sleep in. Then you that's a good gift from God. You have wisdom to come to work. That is a good gift from God. You have the strength that you can be able to work for your job. Then that is a gift from God. You have the knowledge to cure other people's sickness. Then that is a gift from God. So don't waste, don't waste those gifts not to use for the glory of God. You can use this gift to glorify God. When the nurse told me back in 2021, she said, Romy, I know you, don't, I, I, you believe in God, but if you believe in God, why are you still in the hospital? Don't you believe in miracles? I said, yes, I do. But this is what I believe. Every good gift comes from God. That's why I'm here in hospital. So even you have the gift. Even that doctor have the gift to, to do my surgery here in my back. He has a gift, and I believe that gift comes from the Lord. Whether you believe it or not, that's what I said, and he left. <laughs> right? And the last thing that I really wanted to say this to you, and this is the important thing, that is faith in action with grace, that don't just listen, listen to God's word, but do it. Understand the this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desire. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your heart. For it, is, for it has the power to save your soul. But don't just listen to God's word and you must do it what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror to see yourself. Walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you doing it. Amen. I mean, it's... It's something that we can look at. And, but I wanted to emphasize these things, that this is where we come up and conclude. For it is by the power to save your soul. And that's most people. I, uh, is, is, is James teaching another doctrine? Or is against with Paul? What Paul says, right? Look at this in my conclusion. The epistles of Jacob or James, he shares sage wisdom for all followers of Jesus. He doesn't teach new theology or new doctrine. Paul says, we are saved by grace, not by words. It does challenge believers on how they should live. When they believe, listen to, and obey God's word, they, say they show their love for him and others. Their action matches their word, and their lives are made whole and perfect. Now, to, come, to sum up with that thing, remember that I said a while ago, you know, that... that that this word might save you. But who is the word? Jesus. Remember John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, Jesus is the word. And the word is God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. That is Jesus. Now, who, who are you? Who you, who you are faith with? Who, what is your faith? Who you believe? Jesus. And that is your faith. And who is Jesus? Is the grace of God. And the grace of God must put into action so that you will be saved. Remember? Because if you don't have grace, you can't put your faith into action. Listen to this carefully. You must have Jesus to love others. It's hard to love someone else. I, myself, I don't know if I could love stranger people. 
I don't know if I, I, if I could love these people that full of hatred in their heart or these men that are thieves, that are molester, that are, you know, who they are. I don't know if I could love them. But because of Jesus, I should stand for who I believe. Jesus said, I love you for who you are and what you have. Remember that guy on the cross? Jesus, don't forget me. Remember me. Jesus never asked him, no, you are a criminal. Did he say that? No. Jesus didn't say, no, you did not repent your sin. No, you did not ask for forgiveness to God. No, you are like this, you are like that. He did not, Jesus did not remind him of what he did. But what Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. When someone asks for forgiveness to you, are you going to deny them? Or are you going to love them? and accept their humility. If there's someone comes to you and asks for your help, are you going to deny them? Or you just give them and give them a hug? I have a cousin in Las Vegas for so long, and I'm waiting and I'm longing. I said, last Friday, please pray that, he will res- that she will respond. I wanted to see her. I just wanted to hug her and say I love her and forgive me for what I have done in the past I want to tell her that and that prayer came last Friday night that very night my cousin texted me I want to see you in Las Vegas Valerie you know this and surely we are in that prayer night it's just powerful and of course I love my cousin even though I know she's not a Christian and not a believer, but she did not deny me. And I felt that love. And how much more we are a Christian? Are we can continue denying people? That is grace. That is faith in action. That is grace that you put into action because you believe in Jesus. And that makes you perfect. So when you when you have the grace faith in Jesus action must follow I believe it is hard to put your faith into action unless you have the grace in you that's what I believe Titus 3 it says this but when kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared not by words of righteousness which we have done but that all according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on his abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become peers according to the hope of eternal life. Let's stand and receive the grace of God and put that into action. Let it be. Lord, let it flow right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you pour out your grace, that love that is it's unconditional, that love is beyond our comprehension, is higher, is deeper, is wider, Lord God, than anything else, oh Lord God. God, we may not understand much about your love and your grace, but Lord, it is enough that to know by your grace we are saved. And through that grace, we must put our faith into action. I pray to all of us that are here right now, Lord, pour out that blessing. Pour out that blessing of love. Pour out that blessing of hope. Pour out that blessing of joy. Pour out that, that blessing of peace to have the life that you want us to be in this world so that when we come to your place, we are perfect, holy, and righteous, and blameless that we might have fight the good fight of faith and finish the race so that when we come to you and you will tell us, good job and well done, my faithful servant. That's all I want to hear from you, Lord, when I see you face to face. And the same thing, my prayer with my brothers and sisters in the name of Jesus. May God bless you with this powerful grace and His mercy will be upon you so that you may your faith will put into action 
in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Speak the name of Jesus. His power. Yeah. Your name is Jesus. Come on. Your name. Yeah, your name. 